and a bunch of others came out and seconded what he said in 2004 and said Bush better not roll out the dead body. So I guess Obama did it later. Uh, WikiLeaks uh, documents showed that Pachinik and I were both attacked by Stratford. Very upset about uh, the fact that we were saying it wasn't true. He got visited by MI6 and a bunch of other people. I got visited as well, and that was a meeting off record, so I'm not going to get into it and say by who. But, I mean, this is getting to the point where major agencies, foreign agencies, are sending people, I can go online and there's a famous person coming to see me. I mean, it's getting to that point where well, they're sniffing around, deciding, I guess, whether they're going to put a bullet in my head or whatever. But the good news is the info's already out there. All, you kill me, you just make it that much more popular. You kill Pachinik, that happens. Now, Pachinik, I don't want to call him a slippery cat, but he's not like Bill Clinton. I think he's an honorable guy, but he is, you know, on the inside, the head of psych warfare for the State Department that was over all the major agencies, ran the Camp David Accords, co-wrote a bunch of books with Tom Clancy. He is the composite character that the Jack Ryan's based on, produced a bunch of Hollywood films as well. He's a medical doctor, psychiatrist, and uh, was also a bull above captain uh, in the Navy, part of a lot of secret operations, part of founding Delta Force. And a lot of the audience loves him, some of the audience hates him, but you always get uh, interesting information. He's got a new book coming out, Steve Pachinik Talks. I uh, will certainly uh, be uh, reading that and carrying it at InfoWarsStore.com. You can find it uh, at StevePachinik.com. And he joins us to talk about the torture report. I'll tell you my view on the torture. I think torture is extremely effective. I don't think it's effective at getting real information. I don't think it's effective at winning just wars. I think it's effective at getting fake information, fake uh, false uh, testimonies and confessions, terrorizing populations. And it's very effective at discrediting everything the government does. It's very effective at making you wear the black hat. It's a great way to demonize America, part of the globalist program. One famous individual said the purpose of torture is not getting information. It's spreading fear. Eduardo Galeano. And yeah, that's a big part of it as well. What do you think tasers are or the misuse of them and paying compliance? Uh, but the reason, yeah, Obama's trying to score points on this right now. The intel I've got is that's still going on. I mean, Joe Biggs was a staff sergeant in the Army in Afghanistan and Iraq, three tours, happened to have Hastings embedded with him on two of those operations and they saw some of the biggest battles out there because Biggs always wanted to go where the fighting was and the army they'll send you if you want to do that and uh, those were written about but he but my, my point is it's on record he did the things he says he did one of his big jobs was delivering people for torture in fact I think we ought to later get I said it earlier get Biggs in here to talk about torture he should be on tomorrow he should be on a lot because he would deliver people for torture and sometimes they didn't come out and guess who was there DEA FBI uh, CIA, you name it. It was all about drug trade, folks. Nothing to do with torturing real terrorists. So there are people getting tortured. It's just not for what you think. They got black sites everywhere. Camp X-Ray has a psychiatric facility within it run by the CIA where they admit they do sexual torture, you name it. Some of that's in the report. It's testing torture. It's a laboratory, but not with white lab mice. It's with 14-year-olds, 16-year-olds, you name it, who eight years later get deployed as the heads of ISIS. So I see it as a ground to find the psychological candidates to, to actually be cutouts to lead some of these shadow quack armies like ISIS. Now, that's my view from researching the history. We'll see if... Former psych warfare chief and you know black ops uh, tricks master uh, Steve Pachenik agrees or disagrees. That's quite a compendium I just threw out there, Doc. What do you say? What I say is, as usual, you're my buddy, you're my friend, and I think you're not wrong, but let me uh, amplify the whole issue, why this came out now. You see, you and I talked about the entire torture a year and a half ago. Alex, and your audience had a detailed report from both you and me during the Boston Massacre where exactly the uh, exposure of 6,000 pages of torture documents were made by Asa Hutchinson and James Jones, implicating Hayden, implicating uh, Brennan, implicating Bush, uh, implicating Jeb, implicating a whole bunch of people and the neocons that we've talked about. So this came out in a year and a half ago. The question I want to tell your audience and the issue I want to bring up is why was this brought up now today? 
And in my opinion, it was brought up not because torture has stopped and not because it has absolved anybody of anything. On the contrary, it continues. And the CIA really doesn't care. It doesn't care what you think. It doesn't care what I think. It doesn't care what the president thinks. Why? Because this uh, expo exposure by Feinstein is nothing more than an absolution of the Senate Intelligence Committee led by Dianne Feinstein and Jay Rockefeller, both who are leaving, and it's basically an absolution to say, oh, when we, we didn't know about the torture, but eight years later we went into detail, and they revealed everything that you and I and the audience knew for eight years. So it's a giant butt covering. It's a giant butt covering operation. Yes, that's the first part. The second part is the issue that you and I started 13 years ago, and they can't get away from it, and the audience knows this. And this is a complete distraction, again, from the Osama bin Laden false story. Because if you notice what comes out in the torture, Jose Rodriguez, this Puerto Rican little nothing, says, yes, I'm in charge of the torture, and I was the one that got the information to get Osama bin Laden. Well, we know he was dead. We know that 9-11 was a stand down. We know the Osama bin Laden seal raid was nonsense. We know Zero Dark Thirty was nonsense. So what's coming out again is they're trying through another technique, the CIA and the administration, Obama, because he said he killed Osama bin Laden. Well, he killed nobody, and the CIA never killed Osama bin Laden because Osama bin Laden was already dead under Clinton when Clinton sent Dr. Dooley from the CIA to the Dubai hospital. So this is another way of getting to the Osama bin Laden story, which is another lie. In other words, the CIA and the administration, uh, Obama, who is a CIA born and bred product of a single mother who was in the CIA, a maternal grandfather and grandfather who were in the CIA with a missing father, classical profile of the individual that's recruited by the CIA, as was Bill Clinton, with no father and a single mother. You see this repetitive strain of the personality profile. They're absolving Obama and saying, in effect, yes, he killed Osama bin Laden, and these were the facts that led to Osama bin Laden, all of which are lies. So this is, again, a distraction to absolve the senators, to say that Obama really isn't CIA and really did kill Osama bin Laden. We, we know that's not true. Where there's a Osama bin Laden, we know that's a lie. And then on top of that, they indicted themselves to avoid the very issue of 9-11 and stand down. And as you see, what they try to do is say, oh, Bush Jr., that moron, who knew exactly what he was doing along with Cheney, the, the most nefarious and cowardly of all people, because he refused to serve our government 11 times, they basically are said that they didn't know about this. And so they blame Addington and a bunch of their junior uh, people, so it makes Bush Jr. look as if he was really a hero coming forth to protect the CIA, when in fact he was covered by the CIA. So it, avo avo it avoids the issue of 9-11. Then we get down to another indictment that this whole uh, drama of the absurd is creating, and that is the indictment of media exposition of the Anderson Coopers, the fair-haired, effete young men from Yale who had CIA internships and they leaked out information. And as you will see in the report, they re leaked out information to various people on the Washington Post, the New York Times, and elsewhere. And what you're seeing, and you'll say to yourself, but this sounds crazy. And the answer is no. The CIA is a reptilian organization. It's pretty much like a squid that will lose one arm, cut off another arm, so that it can regenerate again. Its only purpose is never to deny its existence, but to continue its nefarious existence, and it will cut off anybody who works with it, for it, or on it, and it doesn't matter whom, whether it's John F. Kennedy, whether it's someone like Nixon who intervenes with it because he's not part of it, whether it's a Romney, uh, whether it's a, a Reagan who was not part of it, and whether it was Bush who was part of it whether it was Bill and Hillary Clinton, both very much steeped in the CIA because they were both at Yale. Bill Clinton reported to the CIA when he was on an Oxford scholarship. He denies it, but if you vet him out, and again, he's slippery, less slick uh, Bill, a lie all the time. He is a CIA operative and informant, as was Hillary. She was on the impeachment committee for Nixon. 
which by definition meant she worked for the CIA. She received the money on 9-11 to give to the victims, and it's still part of the CIA. So this is a way of cleaning the deck as well for Jeb Bush to run, who is also part of this family of the CIA. All right, Doctor, stay there. Corrupt. We got to go to break. Riveting stuff. I agree with what you're saying. It's just prima facie evidence right there. What comes next? Stay with us. Call in on this Wednesday, the 10th day of December, 2014. 800-259-9231. But we're just doing quick questions so you can answer and we can move to the next person. 800-259-9231. Also, we'll briefly talk about his new book coming out. I, I want to do a whole interview on the book uh, in the near future. But before we get to that... I overall agree with what you're saying. It makes perfect sense. Plus, as you said, they can inject all the fake narratives into a report that exposedly, you know, exposes them. Exposedly, I just invented a new word, that supposedly exposes them. Uh, but on top of that, at the same time, it's kind of like NSA spying. It's illegal. They deny it. It comes out. And then they use the whole process of investigating it to come up with solutions that basically codify it and legitimize it. Correct. Nothing will be done. Absolutely, this entire report will not even nick the CIA's ability to continue to lie, distort, and deny and create illegal activity. All this report did was to absolve Obama from being corrupt and illegal in his war act. It allowed Hillary Clinton to run uh, with the notion that she had nothing to do with 9-11 and the stand-down, although her husband was involved in rendition along with Sandy Berger, and it will clear Jeb Bush's name in the name of his brother, George Bush, who didn't know about the 9-11 stand-down and the torture, and in fact will implicate George, uh, Jeb Bush. So really what this has done paradoxically in the narrative is to compound the story that you and I first discovered 13 years ago, that all of this is a lie. The 9-11 stand-down was, in fact, uh, 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 a false flag. Our own government attacked us. Osama bin Laden was already dead. But that story cannot die, Judge, uh, 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 and, and Alex, because you and I will not allow it to die. And the American public now believes 78 to 80 percent believe that Osama bin Laden was already dead. They don't believe the SEAL story. They can't believe Mac Raven, a lying head of a SEAL team. And then again, the SEAL teams have failed. They failed time after time, and then instead they write reports. And then a guy like Jose Rodriguez, the head of the counterterrorism office, goes to, Z to, goes to Kathy Bigelow, the, head, uh, the director of the movie Zero Dog 30, and in detail, under the directions of John Brennan, gives her a detailed account of a false narrative of how they how they assaulted Osama bin Laden, who's already dead. Let me shift Not gears. One of them. Let me shift gears into a couple other subjects, just because they're interesting factoids. Yeah. Why do they try to fit, pick fatherless uh, boys for this CIA role? Is it the state becomes their father? A and then B. Why don't you ever see the army in these? Navy SEAL type movies where they're the supermen. I, I mean, the Navy pushing Navy SEALs as God is really starting to get ridiculous. Well, you asked two excellent questions. I'll quickly answer. Number one, the fatherless son is a, a totally absent son. That they, they, in fact, become the surrogate father. They know the son is vulnerable. Both uh, Obama, Barry Sorrell, and Bill Clinton were involved in sex, drugs, and other activity, so that they could be compromised. What the CIA always looks for is for a man or a woman who can be easily compromised and used at any time and can be indicted or thrown away or neutralized. The second part is the Army is much more sophisticated. Under Dempsey and under various other generals, the uh, special forces and units out of Fort Bragg and elsewhere have been instructed never to speak up. The reason why the SEALs have been a failure is because of Admiral Mueller, whose father was part of a publicity machinery from the William Morris Agency, Admiral Mc McRaven, who was a total disaster and was a loudmouth, as was Stan McChrystal. These were all narcissists. The SEALs were a failure during the Reagan administration. Thirteen of them died on the way to Grenada when I was involved in that uh, false, you know, attempt to attack Grenada. And they couldn't explain why three, 13 SEALs drowned on a raft when they were trained to be 
underwater. So seals have always been a secondary quality and a secondary class of gamesmanship. But they've been the first one to run to the movies, run and make movies about themselves, whereas the other units, uh, the Navy, the, the Army, the Air Force, and other special units that I will not get into, have never been heard about, will never be heard about. And under General Martin Dempsey, they will be under strict commands. The Navy should be reprimanded. The Chief Naval Operations Officer should have demanded. Stay there, doctor. The yeah, end stay there. We're gonna come back. Run. We'll, we'll be right back with more Alex on that. Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Out as quickly as I can through the Alex Jones Show and through other medium, i.e., my self-publishing, so that eventually you can read. The words that were words of freedom and a call to revolution at a time when we will be shut down by DARPA, CIA, DHS, and any other organization that has really no legitimacy over Well, let's us. expand so, on that because I personally know that there are these bigger financial interests that have installed these politicos to carry this bipartisan treason correct. out. And whereas I do want to see them brought to justice, if they want to be sent to the island of Alba... Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of times cornering these people is more dangerous. We need the political system to realize it's pushing us all over the edge of a cliff. It's doing right. things that are untenable. It's attacking the free market. It's doing things that are totally predatory while trying to stir up a race war as a political distraction for the political class. What about the people in the system who are just, you know, working for $100,000 a year, $60,000 a year, at the NSA, you know, in the police departments, uh, who I know are questioning all these things and do realize that what's going on is treason, but are too scared of losing their job. Uh, I mean, in the end, it's all going to go down anyways. If we don't say no now, we will lose everything. It was Kennedy that said, to paraphrase him, those that make peaceful uh, you know, revolutions impossible, make violent revolution inevitable. I want to restore the republic. I know the word would be revolution because we've already been conquered like Vichy France, but there's got to be some way to have a velvet revolution where it doesn't have to get bloody because you can see Homeland Security gearing up to fight, you know, the, the liberty movement, gearing up to go after anybody who's sustainable. Uh, but this government's so inept that, I mean, if they actually start a physical civil war, Dr. Pachenik, from your war fighting and psychological experience, how do you think it's going to go? I don't think it'll go very well for those that actually try to enforce it, but I guess the globalists are just going to sit in armored redoubts in D.C., New York, or Switzerland, or Luxembourg, or London, or Monte Carlo. I mean, I think it's when the bankers start realizing we're coming for them, but look at the 36 top bankers dead in one year. Look at how many, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of secret wars going on, aren't there? Well, there, there are, but the key element is very, the very thing that you and I are using now has been the, and, and the instrument that CIA and DARPA created in 73, the Internet, is the very instrument of destruction for Obama, for Bush, and for Clinton. And the reason for that is that you and I, have been successful by using the internet. And, and now you are speaking to 10 million people, not in New York and in Texas, but all over the world. I get responses from all over the world. And I say to all of you out there, you young people and older who use the internet, use that internet if you have to block, act, or however anonymously you may do it. And I repeat it again, however anonymously you may do it. You can come into these systems and the CIA because they're very fragile, State Department, Treasury, the White House, and you can hack your way around that. And believe me, there will be no bloodshed because this government is so incompetent that it had no idea of how many people were in the CDC, namely 16,000 people at $7 billion who did nothing in Ebola. Instead, I had to ask our military and General Dempsey send 4,000 soldiers of Africa in order to handle Ebola. So the only functional aspect capability we sure. have is really the Army. Let me ask you this point again. It has been compromised by Mueller. It has been compromised by Free, Holy, perhaps it can be turned around by Conley, but I don't think so. Obama has been compromised. The White House is compromised. Bush is compromised. Clinton is compromised. So we have to take 
Now, the revolution, the velvet revolution, as you call it, and stream it through the electrons right into the White House and to the legislators and to the CIA, Department of Defense, the FBI, and hit them with every electronic passion that we have. And that is our revolution in America. And the world will follow us because you are that a voice. They listen to you. Well, that's right. The listeners right. are and my guests are. I mean, not me so much. But Dr. Pachinik, briefly, why did they send, when the whole Bin Laden announcement got made, I know they sent some agencies over to you. I got some phone calls and then a visit. I mean, what is the point of that? Just pure intimidation? They're afraid. No, no. They, 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 well, I was about to say, they, they, were, they, they were very nice about it. You know, she, actually crying uncle, yeah. Well, it, 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 it's this, uh, Alex. You and I have been together kind of informally for a long time. In the beginning, they tried to intimidate you, and, and you were kind of a little bit concerned. And then I said, just hold the line. One thing that doesn't work is intimidation of an American. Particularly Americans like you and I, you were born here, I have worked in our government and used techniques on behalf of our government to take down the Soviet Union, to bring peace to Cambodia, to take down the Khmer Rouge. Now, they know what I'm capable of doing. When you use the word slippery, I knew what you meant, and I want your audience to understand what I, you mean. I know exactly how our intelligence community works, but I also know how to take it apart piece by piece without even using a bullet. They know it. They know that I know it. They know that it can be a disaster if I pull my full force and what I need to do without having to do anything. All right, stay there, Dr. Pachinik. I want to come back and finish up talking about that straight ahead. We'll be right back. Stay with us. And, Doc, I want to, even though you don't want to talk about yourself, I want to get you back in the next month or so, specifically on your book, and we'll talk about that once the show ends coming up. Uh, but right now, let's go to Mike in Wyoming. Thanks for holding. You're on the air. Hi, uh, Dr. Pachinik, uh, you being an expert in psychological war warfare, I was wondering if you could comment on a story that's on the front page of InfoWars' uh, website, which is uh, about these low-flying Apache helicopters and uh, uh, messages being sent out to local citizens on their cell phones. That's right. The stories on DrudgeReport.com from Infowars.com. Thousands of cell phone users receive government emergency alert. Kentucky residents told to prepare for action. We're seeing the massive buildup for domestic takeover. What's happening, Doc? Well, I, I would I would not take that seriously. What I what they're basically doing is they, in their attempt they're trying to intimidate the audience uh, by fear through sending messages. In their, in their sense, they're going to say they're trying to prepare for any kind of emergency. But really what they're trying to do is to create incidences of uh, fear or, or what we call the Black Hawk helicopters or the Apache flying helicopters or the, or the Hog helicopters coming down at very low flight. They monitor, they send out messages, and then they try to intimidate an audience. Just ignore it or jam it. If you know how to jam the signal, send it back up. And then report it to your local FAA, report it to the local airport. Yeah, this is a, basically a conditioning military. PSYOP, like when they went into Panama. Right. They're preconditioning the public for takeover. Yeah, it's basically the, they did the same thing in, in, uh, in 395 Miami Beach. They had a whole special ops program right in front of one of my bridges, and they made it look as if this was really very professional. The problem is the Army, the Navy, and the CIA have been reading, have been watching too much of their own movies that they created to begin with. For the most part, they're not very effective. For the most part, I have used Army and, and the FBI in hostage situations, and they were disasters. They could not repel off of the helicopters because of rotation. They are not very effective in, in hostage survival. So the reality is very different from the images they want to portray. So the images they portray is one of fear, intimidation, efficiency. The reality is that they're a government agency that's totally ineffective. Yeah, Mike, PSYOP. Does it, I mean, what's your take on it, Mike? Um, I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it was just a... a uh, just a snafu or, or size. It's massively it's increasing, John, and it's also to condition the troops. But all, but all it does yeah, is condition them to, to, to wake up. Uh, all I'm saying about the military, especially the Army, the most awake group, I mean, they know what's going on. Uh, let's talk well, to the Army. Has, the Army has been told repeatedly if they don't stand up and stop this nonsense on behalf of the Navy colleagues and the CIA and other parts of the intelligence community, they will be in trouble. 
and they will be denigrated in the eyes of the civilians. So they've been repeatedly warned by me and others that they have to stand up and say this enough, including against the President of the United States. But, Michael, it's basically a conditioning exercise, and if you want to have fun, take some jamming equipment. <laughs> Stop it. it. Pachinik wants a revolution. Mike in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, yes, Alex, uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh, I was wondering... What are we going to do if uh, if it does turn hot? How are we going to get the resources to uh, to uh, fight this thing? Well, I wouldn't be concerned. You have to remember that during the Revolutionary War, only 4% of the population of 700,000 men were involved in the actual fighting and combat against the British. In this particular case, the United States uh, uh, government cannot handle the, the, the mileage and the distances that occur all over the United States. We're too spread out. Texas. We're too spread out. I live in Florida. Uh, uh, Alex lives in Texas. There are people in Montana. We're a few than a million people. So I would not worry about it. But if I am a Second Amendment believer, I think you should have some of those surpluses. I think some of the things... Stay, stay there. Back in one minute. Stay there, Mike. Stay there, uh, Dr. Pachenik. Come back in 70 seconds. Infowars.com. A peaceful info war revolution against this tyranny uh, but finish up your statement on that when you say things are getting hotter i can see the machinery of the establishment trying to move but it's mainly just propaganda and turns more people off if i was trying to turn people off i would do what they're doing but i know they're not in a conspiracy against themselves do these arrogant people in government really think they built this whole thing and that and that they aren't just sitting on top of it no, basically, the arrogant people in government are not as smart as you think they may be. What was happening and why I'm concerned is that this kind of arrogance exponentially grows. And what happens is they're going to start making mistakes. And when they start making mistakes, they start blaming each other. And that's what you see happening. You see the legislation uh, uh, burn the CIA. The CIA is burning the White House. But in turn, what happens is the American public eventually pays for it one way or the other. So that the American, what happens is they become more and more paranoid within the intelligence community and within the security community, and they start to act out. Acting out meaning they will start another false flag, they'll start another war like ISIS, which is absolute nonsense, created by the CIA, used by JSOC, again, uh, run by a Navy admiral, where you have guys coming in and out fighting Americans against Americans. This has to stop. I was about to this say, and then the Army has to go fight a group run by the Navy. I mean, this is insanity. It's not only insanity. This is why your people and the young people of your audience who know hacking, who understand anonymous, these are the ones who become very valuable. And these are the ones who are the, the, the administration is afraid of them. I can't tell you how fearful they are of your audience out there that knows how to handle computers. Now, clearly, I can't incite you or instigate you, but I do caution you that if this continues, the absurdity of our civilian theater and the notion that Diane Feinstein didn't know about it, Jay Rockefeller didn't know about it, John McCain, it is getting absurd, I hear you. and it's costing us $1.1 trillion. Let's get a few, I agree, a few final quick little questions. The establishment's gone crazy. Uh, Bill, you're on the air from Wisconsin. Quick question, please. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Uh, Dr. Pachenik, I agree with 99% uh, of what you have to say, but, you know, you seem to whitewash Herbert Walker Bush, and I, and I just can't stomach that. I'm not one well, of I mean, the young I, folks. I won't whitewash him. What I, what I said is his only contribution was to help in the takedown of the Soviet Union Cam Cam uh, Cambodia Peace Conference. The rest, I do not whitewash. He has approved George Chuck Bush Jr. He has approved Jeff. He's approved Neil, who's been a, a corrupt individual. Okay, well, there's your Colorado, answer. So Bill, whitewash that. thank you, Bill. We're not cutting you off. We're just out of time. Michael in Louisiana, go ahead. Yes, gentlemen. Uh, in March and August of 2013, there there's a case going to court, Shalee versus Bush, that was, was going to put the entire Bush administration in jail on the Nuremberg trial precepts. Um, Obama stepped in and had that case quashed and then went to the courts to seek immunity for the entire Bush administration. I'd like to know how this case fits in with the recent now, 
release of the torture uh, memos, and if the well, well, I don't know the case. I don't know if Pachinik does, but well, I, the only thing I would suggest is that's correct. That domestically, the president gave everybody immunity, but in reality, you have to take it to the International Hague Court. Anytime any of these individuals, the Bushes, leave the United States, they can be in prison. Henry Kissinger knew that. Uh, Michael Hayden knows that. That's right. Everyone these people aren't invincible. In they aren't that's invincible. Right. And we, and we need to let them know that the people are aware and awake. Dr. Pachinik, thank right. you so much. Have a great right. holiday coming up, uh, and we'll talk to you for sure, uh, Lord you. willing, in the new year. Thank you. All right, My folks. Pleasure. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you, too. Now, we're going to go to break here, come back and retransmission. Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Pray for liberty, pray for freedom, pray for the First Amendment. We've had an amazing year here at Supernatural. Buying up loads of ammo at the same time.